Welcome everyone on the day two. In this today's session, we're going to talk about the more features of Java. We'll go and talk about how Java is different from your favorite language C++ and why do I say that it makes more sense to learn Java than C++ today. And the third one, we'll talk about what is the difference between the compiled programming language and interpreted programming language. So let's go and deep dive each of these in this detailed YouTube video. So we need to learn Java because of the following capabilities, because Java is simple. Because Java is secure. Normally when you write the code in the bigger enterprises, you are too much concerned about the security these days. When you write the Java code, it ensures that the code that you have written could not be compromised easily. Now, since there's so much of community support, Java is robust. Object oriented, we have already talked about. We have talked about Java today. is highly performance, is highly optimized. So many evolved version of Java has come up, which helps you build scalable applications. Java is functional also, as I mentioned with the Java 8, Java is a functional programming language as well. Multi-threaded, we'll talk about threads more, but what it means that with the Java programming language, multiple works you can do in parallel, which is allowed with the help of Java multi-threading functionality. And last but not least, a very important concept called as a platform intermittence. Let's try to understand what is the meaning of the platform independence. Platform independence means that, you know, let's say that if there's a programming language called as X, and let's say that you have used this programming language to write a code in a Windows machine. And now if I want to go and take this same code to another machine, which is say for example, Mac, and if it is not running, that's a big problem because then you have a huge dependency that the code which is written on Windows can only go on Windows, the code which runs on the Mac will only run on the Mac. In today's modern world, when the people are having the multiple devices, someone is using Windows, someone is using Mac, someone is using Linux, the requirement is that we should write the code once and it should run on all the platform. It should not depend on which platform you're running the code itself. Java brings a great feature along with it. It says that, dude, you write the code on one platform, you have Linux, great, you write the code there, but now when you want to execute be it Mac, be it Windows, it will work seamless equally well. And that's the one of the most unique feature of Java. Now, most of the programming language, the modern programming language, they are platform independent, but at the time when Java came up, that was one of the unique concepts which Java brought to the table. So with all these features, I believe we are all strongly agreeing now that Java is a good language. It was a good language five years from now. It's also today. And in the coming years also, if you have a solid understanding in Java, that will take a long way for you to move and speed fast in the career. Now let's try to talk about one of the very debatable topic. Normally, I believe many of the times the students in the college spend a lot of time debating this, that which is a better programming language, C++ or Java. Now, since here I am talking about Java, let's try to understand that how Java is better in many terms than C++ and why you should go and learn it. So, so normally I believe all of you who is watching this course, you're doing it because you want the jobs. Let's try to keep things very practical first of all. You know, I always take the practical approach first and then the theoretical approach. Now, if I have to go and take the jobs, I have to see that what industry is working on. Now, almost all the big companies where you have to go and build the real world applications, the main tech stack which this company is working is in Java itself. So normally if your main goal, your more main intention is around the jobs, you want to be more employable, you want to learn a programming language, which let's say that you end up getting joined in a company, you get to use the same language to solve the problem, Java is definitely a choice. So one of the biggest advantages of using Java over the C++ is that you have a more number of more and better job opportunities. So this is a more practical reason that I say that you should go and prefer Java over the C++, but then there are more technical and theoretical reasons also which Java has the advantage over the C++. As I said, Java is uh, aware that change is the only constant. The Java advantage is that it is platform independent, which was not the case with C++. Number two, Java came later than C++, so it's more evolved version, and the Java maker ensured that learning Java is easier than C++. So again, if you are someone from C++, if you're trying to learn Java, you find that it's much easy to learn. Third, as I was saying, 
Java ecosystem is very wide. Many people in the market are using Java, so it's widely used in the market. One of the biggest problems in C++ was the memory management. You have to define the objects and then you have to go and uh, delete them. And if you don't do it, you end up wasting memory. So doing the memory management was a very complicated task that one has to handle it manually itself. Java maker said that, okay, let's try to make this thing also easy. And that's how they came up with a concept called as a garbage collection. Garbage collections helps you automatically manage the memories in the system. Last but not the least, all thanks to the evolving community of the Java. Java has a better and the more consistent libraries. What is a library? We'll talk about in details in the coming slides and the videos. So now we have understood that C++ and Java. But one of the supporters of C++, they say that C++ is much faster. C++ is much faster than Java. Is it true? Yes, to some extent it is. But Java is slowly coping up with the C++ itself. But why C++ is faster than Java or why one programming language is faster than the other programming language? How does that happen? Let's try to understand that now. So sir, if I have to understand that why one programming language is faster than the other programming language, we can go and divide all the programming language which is there on the earth. Say for example, we have C++, we have Python, we have JavaScript, we have Java and many other programming languages. All of these programming language, they can be grouped into two types of programming language. What are those? The first type of the programming language is called as the compiled programming language. And the second type of the programming language is called as a scripted or interpreted programming language. Now the way these two programming language execute, this is slightly different which gives one programming language a slightly upper hand in the performance compared to the other one. Let's try to see that what happens. So for example, if I go and talk about the compiled programming language. In this what happens? Let's say that you are using a compiled programming language, for example, C++. First of all, you would go and write the code. After the code is written, we do a scanning of the code to see if everything is written syntactically correct. All the syntaxes have been used properly, right? This first level of scanning where you go and make sure that everything is written is called as a compilation. Right? So there you do the compilation first. And after the compilation, you get an intermediate state which is called as a byte code. You get a compiled byte code. And then finally, this compiled byte code is executed in the machine. Right? So it's a two-step process. First step is the compilation. And after the compilation, then it is basically the execution happens. Two-step process. Fair? On the other hand, if I go and talk about the another programming language, Say for example, if I'm talking about the interpreted programming language. For example, the example of that could be Python. What happens in this case, you go and write the code. And then this whole code is interpreted line by line. Line by line. And they are executed at the same time. So what happens in the case of the interpreted programming language like Python or JavaScript? At the runtime itself, we are also checking if the code is written correctly, if the syntax is all right, all right, and at the same time the execution is also happening. Compilation broken down into the two steps. First it's compiled and when it is compiled then it is actually being executed. So any error if it, ha it happens, it's filtered out in the beginning itself. In the case of the interpreted programming language, you wait, you say that boss, wait. I'll execute and do the check at the same time. Right? So these are the two different modes. Now can you guys tell me which one will take less time to execute? Less time to execute. 
See, in the second case, when it is interpreted in the execution time, you are also executing, but at the same time, you are also checking. So obviously, it will take more time. On the other hand, in the case of the compiled programming language, since the code is already compiled, it's already in the bytecode form. Executing a bytecode, which we know that is all right, there's nothing wrong in it, will run very fast. So normally the programming languages which are compiled like Java, like C++, they are much faster than the interpreted or the scripting programming languages like again, Python and JavaScript. Again, this could be a very, uh, you know, there's a high probability question that people might ask you that what is a compiled programming language and what is an interpreted programming language and I believe now you are very much clear there. But now between C++ and Java, who is faster and why? If we try to go and understand that, let me go and show you the diagram. So typically in the case of uh, C++, right? After you have done the compilation, as you can see in this diagram, after you have done the compilation, you get the machine code and then machine code operating system works and it executes. But in the case of the Java, there is one more step. In the case of Java, there is one more step. So there is a byte code similar to the C++. Then, then we have a virtual machine that comes into the action, which also involves a step called as an interpreter. Now because of the just-in-time compiler interpreter coming on, as newer versions of Java is coming on this time, which is being taken here, is getting minimalized over a period of time, but still it adds some extra delta t time. And that's why because of this, normally, if I go and talk about the performance, in terms of speed of the execution, somehow Java is slightly tilted less compared to C++. But for this trade-off, Java has been very flexible. It provides you lots of opportunities and it gives you a huge array of possibilities. You know, you can build mobile application, you can build web application, you can build highly secure application, platform independent application and whatnot. You take a use case and if Java is there, you might never go wrong in choosing that programming language. Perfect. So finally, we have come to the end of the day two. I hope you enjoy it. We are just making sure that we are doing things from the scratch. So even if you are beginning programming from the day one, you should be able to understand all these concepts. And if you are feeling the concept, you are actually liking it, just wait for the next video. Every day, non-stop, we'll be coming to you for the next 30 days and make sure that you are knowing everything about the code Java. Put that into the comments. How do you like the explanation? How you are liking the experience? And I'm more than motivated to bring more amazing content for you people.